Okay, everyone, let's start. Um, I have to be very quick, it's a lightning talk, so that's a thing. So I will rush through the points, and if you want any details, please um, reach out and uh, we can talk about more details. So my subject I want to talk about you is about progressive infrastructure delivery uh, using Cargo and Argo CD. And just as an introduction, this is a typical pain level. So when you go to a doctor or with my daughter, for example, she cannot really express herself and you say, hey, on a scale, what, do you, what is your pain currently? And yeah, this is when you are with GitOps on a large scale in an enterprise environment, especially now coming to my topic here, uh, promoting uh, artifacts between different environments. So you really can see where the pain is coming from. Um, quickly, quickly, quickly to myself. My name is Engin Diri. I'm working as a, a customer experience architect at Pulumi. So infrastructure is part of my daily work. I mean, actually, it's the main work. And I love everything, uh, cloud transformations and so on. So to give you a little bit foundational work, so GitOps needs operators. That's very uh, clear for me. That's my interpretation to so, say, okay, without operators, I cannot really run my GitOps approach, especially the Kubernetes approach. So, to deploy infrastructure with GitOps, we need operators. Very, very quick uh, overview, what are operators? Yes, um, we extend the Kubernetes API through a piece of self-written software, defining a custom resource definition, and then um, creating a custom resource based on this. The operator watches it, and um, due to the actions it has to take, it will um, create whatever it needs to create and whatever it's defined. So, um, in my example, here, and uh, I'm going to use uh, Crossplane and Pulumi, so this, they have two operators I can deploy on my uh, cluster, so I want to deploy now infrastructure using the GitOps approach on my Kubernetes cluster deploying Crossplane or Pulumi. Then I start, define my repository, here's an example repository, I put everything in, my manifests and so on. Then Argo picks the stuff up, don't need to discuss about Argo the way how to uh, configure this. And yeah, and then I got it delivered here in this case as an application. It could then also be, uh, when you use Crossplane or Pulumi, um, also the infrastructure part. And yeah, we are done. So that's actually the, the situation. So yeah, everything is deployed. But now comes the point, actually, we only sync now to one environment. Let's call it dev. That's the thing. And to be honest, and here's the real talk, and this is something you obviously have already at your place, and I encounter also with my customers, is there are more than one environment than dev. So how are we going to promote now the changes we made or the definition we made, especially in the infrastructure area, how are we going to promote this now beyond development? And now it gets really, really... Um, mystical, obscure, depending on which company you are. I worked before for a German enterprise, uh, a large enterprise company, having Azure DevOps, GitLab, and all the stuff. So you come up with some really strange stuff. So developers and also sysadmins and whatever, they are very creative to somehow fit the needs into some obscure pipelines. You understand the moment you write it, but then one day later, like bash, you know, you're like, what, the, what is this? I don't know, what is it? So the question is, is there uh, not a better way to promote infrastructure changes uh, the GitOps way? And now we come to one point, again, made from brilliant people in this space, promotion patterns. So promotion patterns describes different ways to implement environments with GitOps, test, staging, and so on, and so on. So then, of course, yeah, understood, promotion patterns. Uh, so the question will be then, how do we realize now environments in GitOps? And again, simple me is like, yeah, that's very easy. Let's use environment by branches. And then, pam, pam, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not something you should do. And uh, a brilliant person here in the space, uh, Kostis, he created an article around this. And this is the quintessence. And as he sits here, so I did not even know this, so props to you because you make my life very easy. Um, he described some ways, and he really says, OK, don't use branches for your environments. That's maybe most obvious, especially with a development background. Yeah, it makes sense to have this stuff, but you run into a lot of, lot of problems. And promotion via Git merges and so on, it's a pain. I mean, honestly, uh, everybody who worked with Git knows this. And there are also now tools around this, which helps us also to, um, to, to, to use a different approach, which helps to say, okay, let's use Helm and customize and, for example, go the way they uh, suggest how to um, do this. I don't want to spoil this, so I keep 
turning around this to not say this stuff. Okay, so we understood now uh, environment by branches is a bad thing, so the next thing which was suggested also from Costis is to say use environments by folders. And again, he wrote another article around this <laughs> from 2022, how to model your GitOps environments, and this time also an article from Christian Hernandez, he works at Acuity and should be also around here, uh, Git, uh, Git best practices workflows for GitOps deployment. And again, here's the quintessence to say, okay, use separate folders to handle your, your environment, it's cleaner, um, use a trunk-based de um, development and tags for improve the consistency and all the stuff that makes things very, very easy. And then, of course, now we come back to the customize and Helm approach to say, okay, now we can use what customize gives us with the base folder and the overlays, or we can use a, a Helm with the different value files to override um, the properties, or we can even mix and match uh, both of them. Okay, so um, here we come now to the point, what's up now? You, you promised something like cargo. Yeah, um, cargo, let's talk about cargo, because cargo is a way to make these things even, even smoother in the experience. So, Cargo, it's a project from Acuity. It was launched, let me lie now, last year, roundish last year. And what is Cargo and why I think you should care and have give Cargo a look? So, Cargo uh, gives here multi-stage promotion, everything the GitOps way, this is very, very important. So, no need for this uh, push pipeline stuff in your CI app, using the CI system to do parts of CD and so on. Um, you have the possibility now with version 1.0 because it's recently went GR to create flexible promotion pipelines. That was not the case in the former versions when I did this talk during uh, um, Open Source Summit in Vienna. It was still a little bit different. Artifacts are here container image, so if you go on your application way or Helm charts and so on. Um, you can do manual automatic, pro uh, automatic promotion of artifacts and of course it's perfectly integrated into the existing ecosystem. Currently Argo CD obviously is the, uh, the, the um, first class citizen implementation but I think um, Flux and Co will join also soon and it's open source, very important. Okay, quickly Argo CI part, uh, we create now an image, we push it to the, uh, to the image repository then you, we as a platform engineers or DevOps engineers, we also uh, push some definitions into our Git repository. Cargo observes this, uh, you can define them. Um, you will see this later in the demo, that's the reason I try to, to rush through. Um, observe these things, detects a change, and then promotes this artifact to the specific environment I selected there or I defined in my approach. And then it also can, and here comes the progressive part, it can also listen to, to some monitoring system, Datadog and so on, or to the deployment in your cluster to see if what's successful, and then roll back again to say, hey, there was something wrong, so let's go back to the previous version. Okay, so I really rushed through, let's go for the demo part. So this is the deployment here of um, my, my application. So here's uh, the definition of my application. I created an umbrella chart here because I want to deploy infrastructure, not an application. I have a little bit more things to do. So I created here now the umbrella chart. Inside I have my cross-plane and Pulumi definition. It's a very basic um, um, static application on, on digital ocean. This is one place. And then I defined here my different stages which uh, includes now, as part of the chart, this um, infra chart definition in the specific version 1.6, for example. I already created a version 1.8 because I do some changes here. And if we spin up cargo now, we can see now in the UI um, what version, what kind of infrastructure is deployed on which stage. We see here on the test stage, let me click on this, um, we see that version 1.8 is deployed. We see that in UAT, that's everything made up from me, it's also 1.8, and for, the, for example, production New York City, uh, it's still the version 1.6. So what did I change between the versions? So um, if we go to our test stage, um, I deploy a Vue.js application. So I found out now, hey, that makes sense. So I put now this property as a default into my umbrella, into my main chart, into my infra chart as an application. So we can see now in the template, um, Crossplane picks up the region and Pulumi does the same, picks up the region and deploys it. 
So now I'm like, okay, that makes sense. I created the new base image of my infrastructure definition. And I say, okay, let's roll this out for UAT. I already did it. Let's roll this out also for New York. So I can do this either via the whole GitOps way. I just wanted to show because my enterprise background also using the UI. So I click on it. I can now say, please roll out 1.8. And it's all depending, I cannot roll out, uh, for example, on this one because it's uh, linked to each other, the stages. I can say, yep, sounds good, let's roll this out. And it was successfully rolled out. And um, so 1.8 is also now on this stage. We should also see here some actions, but let's see this here on this one. We said New York is going to change. So um, this was this here, you see? Um, DigitalOcean picked up uh, the changes it's going to build. Here's still the Go application I had before deployed, and let's hope, please, please be quick, um, that it's working now. Come on, come on. Ah, come on. Please deploy the application. <laughs> It's always, when you do it on, on, uh, before, uh, everything works fine. If you do it in the talk, then uh, one second feels like 10 minutes. Yeah, nice. Okay, you see, now the internet gives me hard times. Okay, so let's still give it a chance to refresh. Okay, it's still uh, pushing the deployment, it's now pushed, so hopefully now New York should have uh, the new application set up. Okay, if not, we have to see the settings. Um, somewhere here is the setting for the build path. Okay, you have to believe me on this one here. Don't know why it did not pick it up, but... Um, it is deployed here, we see that 1.8 is already in place. Ah, okay, it's again pushing stuff, so sorry for this one. Give it a second. Okay, it still doesn't want to deploy this stuff. Uh, I don't know. Okay, let's have a look. Just a second. It should pick up the stuff. Okay, let's go back to the slide to not um, let you wait from this here. So, um, go to the, um, what is it called, uh, here. So, the key takeaways here, what I want to say is what you could see also, cargo here enforces a stricter separation of CI, CD. CI is now really, sorry, great for build artifacts. CD takes care of everything else here. And uh, cargo is GitOps native, and it takes away the previous pain of promotion with an elegant way on doing it. Um, so, that's my takeaway. Um, follow up, you will see the slides. I will upload them. And uh, we have also a happy hour and a booth here. And yeah, that's it. No time for questions. Thank you.